Months-long blockade has finally been broken. This week, the Senate approved three key military promotions. Air Force General Charles Q. Brown, Jr. to Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Randy George to Chief of Staff of the Army, and General Eric Smith to Commandant of the Marine Corps. Normally, military pr nominations and promotions are pushed through the Senate in groups through a speedy process. But Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer was forced to bring each vote to the floor one by one because of one senator, Republican Tommy Tuberville. He's been stalling nominations over the Department of Defense's abortion policy, which allows service members and their families paid leave and stipends if they travel out of state for an abortion or reproductive health care. And with more than 300 military nominations and promotions still on hold, Tuberville doubled down on his effort this week. My hold is still in place. The hold will remain in place as long as the Pentagon's illegal abortion policy remains in place. Joining me now, Sabrina Singh, Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary. Sabrina, thank you very much for coming back to the Saturday show. Um, what threat does this continue to pose to the military, this continued hold on military promotions? Well, what we're seeing right now is this has absolute um, horrible and, and dire impacts to our national security and our readiness. Um, we're incredibly grateful that the Senate has confirmed three of our top military nominees, but this still has a impact all the way down the military chain of command. And so what we have been urging for months now is for Senator Tuberville to lift these holds. Um, in a time when we have the rising threat of China in the east, uh, Russia continuing to wage its unprecedented provoked war in Ukraine, Iran, North Korea. This is the time where we need the leaders that have been selected uh, in, their, in their chain of command and in the positions that they've been selected for. This is incredibly important, and that's why we continue to engage with the Senate and you know, especially Senator Tuberville to lift these holds. Um, there's been reporting that uh, Secretary Austin and Senator Tuberville did have a conversation in July. Yeah. What did the secretary say to the senator? Well, the secretary was very clear and very firm that we're not changing our policy, but these holds have to lift. Um, if you have an issue with the policy, that is on the Senate to take that up and can certainly change and pass legislation uh, to force our hand. We have not seen that because clearly they don't have the votes in the Senate. But um, it was a very it was a very frank conversation. It was a short conversation. And Secretary Austin was really direct with the uh, with the senator about just the impact these holds have on our national security and our military readiness mm -hmm. and and on families because it's left yes. a lot of military families stuck in limbo, including waiting to move to a new location or enroll their children in, in new schools. It, what's the Pentagon doing to address this, if, any, if they can do anything? Well, it's really tough because, honestly, we need the promotions, we need our military officers to be confirmed in order to help these families move. Some families have taken it upon themselves to move on, the, on their own. Um, some families have moved hoping that their significant other or spouse will get confirmed and, and have had to move ahead of their spouse. Um, and we've also had families that have had to disenroll their children from schools. Um, we've had spouses quit their jobs because they've been ready to move, but they're just waiting for Senate confirmation of, of their significant other. And so it's really tough on military families. And that's, you know, something that the secretary takes very seriously. One of the key principles that we operate uh, at the Pentagon with is taking care of our people. It's really hard to do that with one hand tied behind our back. You know, some service members told Politico that they have not used the reproductive health care travel policy because they're afraid that they could face retaliation by someone in the chain of command who may oppose it. Uh, what's your response to those members who are fearful of seeking care? Well, we certainly don't want members to be uh, fear fear that they can't seek reproductive health care wherever they are. And that's, again, why the secretary has really laid out one of his core principles, which is taking care of our people. That's why you put this travel policy in place. It allows a service member or their uh, family members to seek reproductive health care that is not maybe accessible in a place where they're stationed through no fault of their own. They're assigned there. And so it's really important that members who feel any fear, they shouldn't. They should be able to access the care that they need. And we're certainly supportive of them doing that. Uh, a week from tomorrow, the government is... Yeah basically slated to shut down since there's no agreement whatsoever to keep it, keep the government funded. How will that affect the military, a, a, a shutdown? Well, Jonathan, you know who's not shutting down? 
Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, these governments and entities are continuing to operate. And so it is, in, it is incredibly important that our military be funded and the government not shut down, because you're talking about families and military families going without pay right now at a time when we need our best on, on, on our front lines, battle ready, uh, in case anything were to happen for our national security and to protect our interests of both our interests here and allies abroad. And so, um, you know, we're, we're hopeful that, uh, or we're, we're hoping that the Senate and the House can come together and pass a budget and hopefully avert a government shutdown, but unfortunately it's not looking that way. Uh, the Secretary, Secretary Austin, had a very important meeting this week. Yeah. Uh, the Ukrainian President, Volodymyr Zelensky, came to the Pentagon yeah. uh, to meet with the Secretary. Um, <laughs> President Zelensky always comes to town with, a, with an ask. Yeah. What was his ask of the, of the Secretary? You know, they had a really great conversation. I mean, we just, uh, on Thursday, announced another Ukraine security package. Um, so it was a really frank and good conversation about the counteroffensive and what's going on on the battlefield. Um, we continue to flow aid to Ukraine and this administration, you've heard the secretary, you've heard the president say it, we're going to stay with Ukraine for as long as it takes. And so that's something that the secretary reiterated to President Zelensky. Did President Zelensky ask for fighter jets? Well, we are providing F-16s. As you know, we are providing the training for them. That training is slated to start soon. Now, of course, with a government shutdown, some of our trainers could be delayed in actually training some of those pilots. So that's why we're really focused on making sure that the House and the Senate understand the implications that a government shutdown would have for our military. Did he ask for um long-range missiles? Well, you know, that's something that we've never taken off the table. I won't get into private conversations, but as you know, uh, I think the Ukrainians have been very forthcoming on what they want, and we are certainly standing by them to continue to provide Ukraine aid for as long as it takes. Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh, thank you very much for thank coming you. to the Saturday show. Thank you.